Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to episode 32 of My Journey with Jesus. God is holy. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon for a few moments of reflection on God's character and God's holiness. My name is Dave Little. I am not a pastor. I'm not a professional speaker. I'm just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin, and God has laid it on my heart to produce these videos every week as part of my Christian devotional time and hopefully to encourage you all to uh, read along and, and join in the fellowship of worshiping and getting to know Christ as we journey with Jesus together through life. Over the past several weeks, we have been looking at the attributes of God, and today's topic will be God is holy, the holiness of God. And what an exciting topic this is. You can tell my puppy dog is excited about it if you can hear him barking in the background. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. What a great praise to our God, who is holy. What does holiness mean? Growing up, I thought that holiness specifically referred to moral purity. God's holy because he never sins. God's holy because he is the epitome of all goodness. Uh, but as I have studied holiness and, and the language and, and the term holy, the root idea of holiness is not just morally pure, but it is separate, separated apart from, transcendent. Uh, for God to be holy means that God is above humanity and above the world, separated. God is sacred. God is divine. He is set apart. He is completely and infinitely perfect. God's holiness, his transcendence, is the sum total of all of his attributes that we've been discussing over these, over these past few weeks. God is holy because he is all-knowing, because he is all-powerful, because he's loving, he's just, he's merciful, he's gracious. Um, God in his magnificence is holy above all else. As John MacArthur puts it, holiness is the attribute of God that binds all the others together. And as we see in the book of Isaiah, as the Lord declares, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is magnificent and transcendent and holy above and beyond anything that we as humans could ever achieve, anything that we as humans could ever even conceptualize or imagine. And because God is holy, our approach to God should be filled with a sense of awe and reverence. We think about God's holiness when we read the story of Moses in Exodus 3, and God appears to Moses in the burning bush. And as Moses approaches the, the, the burning bush to investigate and explore why this bush is burning and not on fire, God stops him in his tracks and says, Do not come here. Remove your sandals from your feet. The place on which you are standing is holy ground. God's entire being is set apart and transcendent. It is an honor for man to be in his presence. We should come before God with humility and reverence, for God is holy, and it's that humility and reverence that has been termed holy fear. That's how we should approach the holy God whom we serve. Proverbs 9.10 tells us, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That fear of the Lord, that reverence, that sense of awe in coming into his presence is befitting God who is holy, divine, transcendent, set apart, and above the universe and above humanity. 
Now, as Christians, we're called upon to be holy. 1 Peter 1, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Now what does that mean? Of course, we as human beings are not transcendent, and we're not glorious above the universe. We are not morally perfect, and that's why we need forgiveness. 1 John 1, 7 says to us, If we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. It is only through the cleansing and the righteousness of God that he gives us through the death of his Son, Jesus Christ, that we can be considered righteous in the eyes of the Lord and that we can come closer to this state of holiness that God calls us to. You shall be holy for I am holy. As we walk with God, as we obey his word, he brings us closer to his holiness through the process. And, and the big theological word that we can use here is sanctification. God is transforming us. He is making us more like unto his holy character. It is his design for us to be separated from the world and set apart for the good works that he created for us. And I know you're dying to know how Caddyshack plays into this. And, and this is the analogy. If you saw the movie Caddyshack, um, there's this incredible scene where the, the, the Ted Knight character, Judge Schmales, is uh, in, a, in a competitive golf match against uh, his rival, played by Rodney Dangerfield. And, and Ted Knight, Judge Schmales, has this, this putt coming up, and he has to make this putt in order to defeat his rival. So he goes into his golf bag, and he pulls out this, this special putter. And he's, and he's got a name for this putter. The, the putter's name is Billy Baru. And, and he is just so, oh, Billy, 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 Billy Baru, Billy Baru. Um, because Billy Baru was set apart for the sole purpose of making the important putts that Judge Smales ever, ever had to take. Um, Billy Baru was, existed in... Judge Smale's world for one purpose and one purpose only, and it was to make this key putt. And if you saw the movie, you'd have to ask yourself, would Judge Smales have ever used Billy Baru to clean out his gutters? Not on your life. What would Judge Smales have done if he caught Carl Spackler using Billy Baru to whack the flowers in front of the clubhouse? That other I iconic scene from... Uh, from Caddyshack where Bill Murray is whacking the flowers in front of the clubhouse and, and talking about being the Cinderella story. Former greenskeeper, now winner of the Masters. Um, of course you wouldn't use Billy Baru, your special putter, to whack flowers or to clean out gutters because Billy Baru is set apart for one purpose and one purpose only. And that's what it means for us as humans to be sanctified. We are set apart by God for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to love and serve and perform the good works which God has created us for. That's our definition of holiness. So in this coming week, as you think about what, what it means to be holy and what it means to be set apart by God for a single purpose, how can we become more holy? How can we become closer to the sanctified, set-apart, mature, believing Christian that God wants us to be? Here's a few suggestions. Feel free to add your own suggestions in, in the comments. Spend time reflecting on the holiness of God. All of God's attributes that we have been studying, 
his transcendent attributes. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. God is loving. God is merciful. God is morally pure. Reflect on that this week and see how that changes your attitude towards God. See how that changes your attitude towards your own life. And as we reflect on his holiness, we need to humble ourselves before him and approach him with that sense of awe and reverence and to walk in the fear of the Lord, knowing that it is a privilege to walk in a relationship with the God who is holy and transcendent and divine and all-knowing and all-powerful. And the perspective that gives us on our own lives is one of awe and reverence and humility. And thirdly, we need to seek to pursue holiness in our own lives by studying his word. The more we study his word, the more we learn about his character. Obedience to his word. The more we obey his word and keep his commands, the more we understand, A, what a great God we serve, and B, how inadequately we serve him, and how deeply and desperately we need God's love, Christ's forgiveness, and God's righteousness to walk in step with his will for our lives. Seek to draw closer to God's character through prayer and through praise. Seek to serve God through the good works he has called us to. Uh, these are all things we can do to pursue holiness in our own lives. And that is my encouragement to folks for this week. And with that, I will say to all, thank you all for listening. Uh, please feel free to leave your questions and your comments in the, in the comments section below. Always great to hear from folks, either on the YouTube channel or through email or Facebook or, or in person, however you, uh, however you communicate with me. Always great to hear from you all. Um, please feel free to leave your questions and your comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And that will give it a tick on YouTube's algorithms so that other folks who are looking for inspiration, looking for things to meditate and, and reflect upon in their own journeys with Jesus can hopefully find encouragement from this as I find encouragement in uh, producing these reflections from week to week. If you'd like to hear more from the channel, hit the subscribe button and you will get notifications whenever new content comes up on the channel. I try to get my journey with Jesus online every Sunday, and it is indeed a privilege and a blessing that folks are willing and able to, uh, to tune into this broadcast from week to week. And with that, I thank you all again for listening. I will see you next week when we talk about God's glory the glory of God, and that will be the final talk in our series about the attributes of God. So until next week, God bless you all, and go in peace.